Hello everybody, Professor Howe here. Today we're going to talk about micrometers. So here is a zero to one micrometer made by our folks, friends down at Starrett at Athol, Massachusetts. I'm holding, what you see, I'm holding the frame of the micrometer. Here we have the anvil. It's a measuring face. We have our spindle, which rotates. We have a lock in case we need to lock our micrometer to hold the measurement. And here we have the sleeve and, of course, the thimble. And we have, of course, numbers, graduations on each of these. And here we have the friction thimble that allows us to take measurements equally from person to person. Now, if I take the one to two inch micrometer, you'll see that they look very similar with the exception that the one to two has a larger frame. Essentially, all the components are the same. We can make bigger measurements with this micrometer. So when I come into the lab with my micrometer, one thing that you should always do is grab a piece of paper, get your micrometer out, bring the spindle and the anvil together with the piece of paper between lightly, and then just drag the piece of paper away. All of the dirt and contaminants that might be between your measuring faces will now be gone. And you're going to confirm that this micrometer zeroes out. So we're looking at the horizontal line and those two zero marks line up. You know that this micrometer is set to go. So let's take a look at some micrometer readings. I'm going to turn our thimble out a ways. So notice we have some large numbers here. I'm going to point with my finger for a moment. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So our inch is broken out into hundred thousandths of an inch. Our math guys would say, well, that's a tenth of an inch, and they're correct. Remember that we speak in thousandths of an inch. So one-tenth of an inch, uh, two-tenths uh, two of an inch, three-tenths, four-tenths, and so on. As you can see, I can't help myself, but I want to say one hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, and so on. Notice that we have some other graduations here. When we go from the zero to the first line in, we see that there are actually four lines from zero to one. And so the first line is 25 thousandths, 0.025, 25 thousandths. If I went to the second line in, we'd see 50 thousandths. Third line, of course, 25 thousandths more, adds up to 75 thousandths. And in total, from the zero to the one, as mentioned, that's 100 thousandths. Same thing as we go on, 125, 150, 175, 200 thousandths. So that scale on our sleeve is fairly easy to understand. Later, for those of you who know a little bit about micrometers, we're going to talk about our tenth scale, which will bring us into 10 thousandths of an inch. OK. On our thimble, you see we start at zero. And as we rotate our thimble around, you'll notice that we go to 21, 22, 23, 24, and then 25 is actually the zero. So the line I'm reading that on is this central line in the micrometer. It's horizontal, goes all the way across to the zero. Well, how does this micrometer work, you might ask? The threads in the micrometer are 40 threads in one inch. So 40 threads per inch, if we do a little math, one inch divided into 40 uh, are, are threads, we're going to find that one revolution of our micrometer is 25 thousandths. We're actually determining the pitch. So if we uh, divide that out, we get 25 thousandths. And that's exactly what you see. So from the zero here to the one is a total of one thousandths of an inch, two thousandths, three thousandths. So how do we make this happen? Let's take a look. Where are we? If we move in here, let's try to make this somewhat basic. Let's go in here. And we're going to line the zero up to the horizontal line. OK. Counting off, we have 
one hundred thousands. We have two hundred thousands. We can see the twenty-five. And we can also see the better part of our 50 line. And we say, OK, that's 225 plus 25. That's 250. And we're right on the 0. So that reading is 250 thousandths. Let's try another. Let's go here. And now let's take a look. So we have 100. We have 200. We have 300 thousandths. I can see most of that line. Of course, I'm looking against the edge of the thimble here. And I also see 3. So the 3 line lines up with our horizontal line. We have 300 three thousandths. If we wrote it out, it would be 0 0.303. All right, something a little more difficult, perhaps. Let's go out here, trying to line that up for our camera. We have 100, 200, 300. We have 416 thousandths, point 416. Right now, we're only working to thousandths of an inch. We will get into tenths momentarily. All right. And what do we have here? 400. We see the 25 line. We see the 50 line. Do we see all of the 75 line? Well, we don't. Notice we're also not up to the 25. So we're going to say 425, 450. And we're going to say 450 thousandths plus 22 thousandths gives us 472 thousandths in total. What happens now if we have a reading, and notice that our line does not line up completely to either the 20 or the 21, sort of in the middle there. So we can count off on our sleeve, and we see we have 500, almost 25, not quite. We have 500 and 20. We've gone past the 20, so that's 520 mm, plus something. So if we look on our micrometer, up near the frame here at the top, uh, some of these numbers will be in plain view. You can see the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. So those represent 1 thousandths of an inch broken into 10 parts. So those are 10 thousandths in machine tool language. We call them tenths. And so as we were looking at our reading moments ago, we remember that we had 520 thousandths, and then we weren't sure because we were in between a line. If we look here, we're looking for really three lines. One line will line up better than the others. Uh, and the other two will be just slightly off. And if we look at this number 4, which represents 4 tenths, well, as we go across the 2, which has no significance, but the line next to the 2 lines up well with 4. So we would have 520 thousandths, 4 tenths. And you can see that line lines up very well. When you use your micrometer in the shop, you may have to rotate your micrometer to be able to see, but you're going to be able to see the line that lines up best again here is the 4 tenths. And so 520 thousandths, 4 tenths. When we look at the other scale down here, we could kind of estimate and say, well, we were about between the 20 and the 21. And that's a very approximate number. Again, we have the real number. Now, we're going to try another one here in just a moment. Here we have a new measurement. Let's take a look. We count them off. Of course, we have 700 thousandths. We can see the 25 line, the 50 thousandths line, and most of the 75 thousandths line. But notice we're not quite to our zero here. We're very close in this particular case. Notice this line does not line up with the horizontal line here. So we have 700 
50 thousandths, we know that for sure, plus our 24. So that would give us 774 thousandths, and then we have some tenths here that we need to take a look at because we are not quite to the 775 thousandths line or the 25 line here. We're going to investigate this measurement in tenths. So looking for the tenths here at our reading, we were 774 thousandths plus. Again, we're just looking towards our frame, which one of these numbers has a line that lines up with a corresponding line over here. Again, the numbers over here on the sleeve are of no consequence. We're reading our numbers here. Looks to me like our number 8 for 8 tenths happens to line up with the line that is in front of the 10 here. And so we have 774 thousandths, 8 tenths. So now you know a little bit about reading your one inch micrometer, not only to thousands, but to ten thousandths of an inch. And if you need some practice doing that, we can do that in the lab. We're happy to help. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this video.